Hi everybody, this is Melissa and um, today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use PhotoFuse. I use it to edit the photos that I use for my eBay listings and sometimes for my Amazon listings too. So the first thing you're going to go to PhotoFuse.com um, and you're going to sign up. If you're an Etsy seller you can do this automatically with your Etsy account otherwise you would just click on sign up and of course you put in your username, password, your email address. Um, I already have an account, it's free, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in. My info is already saved. So once I'm inside, this is what it's going to look like. I used to sell on Etsy, so some of my listings will show my, my photos. I already have photos uploaded here. Um, but to upload, you could do it a single photo, and you would click on Upload Photo. And then you just click on Upload Photo again, and you choose the photo that you want to work with. Um, so just basically whichever photo you want to use. But I already have some uploaded so I'm not going to do that one. They do have a video of their own that shows you what to do. Um, but you can upload in a batch. So this is really great if you've had a bunch of photos that you've worked with uh, or that you've taken recently and then you just click on upload photos and since I'm on a Mac I click over here it comes to my um, iPhoto and these are my eBay items. So I can just drag and select all the photos that I want to work with. And I would click on open and it would upload the photos. I've already uploaded these so I'm not going to do it again but just to show you that that's how it would be done. Once they finish uploading you'll see the little photos here and then you would click on finish. I'm just going to close this out. So to edit an actual photo, uh, let's do this one that I haven't worked on yet. This is a mint green dress that I'm editing. So you're going to click, this will automatically be selected, and this is the size that it automatically has, but you can change the size of the selection. So I'm just going to make it a little bigger so it can be faster. And you select your item kind of roughly. You don't have to be too specific. Um, you just want to say it's slightly outside of your item. If it has a shadow, you want to include it, and then include all the inside. It, As you see, it's kind of a... Uh, intuitive so it'll select a little bit more for you and here you can see a preview in if you wanted to see the preview in larger you would want to get the pro version and that would require a monthly uh, fee of your choice but I just use the free version so now that I've selected my item I click on finish I don't really mess around with any of this I just leave it as is which is fine and click on finish and it will be processing for a little bit. They'll send you an email when it's done, but basically it just takes a little bit. Um, see, that just a few seconds. So now that I, I can click on it and make sure that it looks all right. See, this looks pretty good. You know, yeah, I already have a crisp white background. Don't have to do anything else to it. Now, mind you, I had already edited this photo in iPhoto. I had cropped it. I had zoomed it in, um, made any color corrections. So that I do with iPhoto or you know whatever program you're using for that. But at least this will give me that white background. Then you just click on download. And you know you choose where you want it to download to, but mine automatically just does it to my downloads folder and automatically opens to in preview. So this is the size of the file. It's actually a pretty decent size. It's just fine for eBay but you can make it bigger. The way I do that is I just go to tools and preview, click on adjust size. A good thing about the size that PhotoFuse gives you the photos is that the resolution is pretty high. It's 300 pixels per inch. So I can easily come over here and go to the height and instead of 700 do it to 1000 or even 1600 and it'll rescale it and still keep it pretty decent looking. It won't look too blurry. Uh, this is, you know, more than big enough for most things. And I'll just close that out, save the changes, and that is it. Now you can also batch download. So say you, you worked on 20 photos, you edited all of them, and then you want to download them, you can click on batch download. Um, but bear in mind, it'll download all of the photos that you have on here. So if you have other photos, like I've already worked with these, I'm not going to download these right now it'll download every single thing on there. It won't let you pick. Um, and it, But if you click on Show Advanced, you can delete the photos that you've already worked with that you don't want to download. 
Um, so I'm just going to leave those as is for now because I'm still working on some of these things. And that is pretty much it. It's not very hard. You can do another one. Sometimes if it's something that is white, it'll be a little trickier. Or you might have to, you know, be more specific about the area that you're selecting. Um, or sometimes the program will uh, choose automatically an area that you don't want it to choose. I don't know if it's going to do that here, but I'll just show you what you can do to fix that. So this is the second photo that we're working with. Let's see what it looks like in the preview. You see it cut out the mannequin. I'm usually pretty okay with that. So if I want to cut out more of the mannequin, I can come over here, click on the little eraser button, and say, okay, erase the whole mannequin. You know, and if I do that, you see in the preview over here, it's small, but you can see that it's gone. Now, if I wanted to still have the mannequin, I can just use this one or even the magic one, but um, you can choose the more specific one and scroll, just click over the area. And now, once it's done, the mannequin is there again. See? Uh, but this is this is very good to, you know, it's very easy, you know, if you need to make sure that something gets deleted. Sometimes, you know, if I have something in the background that I want to make sure it doesn't show up, then I might manually use the erase button. And that's it. It's really easy. It doesn't take a lot of work. Um, I will let you know for white items, it can be a little bit trickier to get it to do that. But for most stuff, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so what I was telling you about the backgrounds, just so you can see what I mean. So here we go, and I choose the dress real quick. So you can see that there's some stuff that I obviously don't want to show up in this photo. Like this, this is part of a lamp and table in my photo section um, where I do my photographs. I just use a plain white wall that I have a hook from. So that's why I have to delete everything in the background. But see, it already erased everything. I don't have to do anything specific other than just making sure that what I want to keep is selected. And give it a minute. And you just click on it. Ta-da! No black lamp. <laughs> so it's really easy, and I didn't even have to crop the photo or make it a weird size or anything. I'm going to go ahead and download this again. And that's it. So I hope that that has helped you feel a little more comfortable using it. You can always get the uh, paid for version, but I use the free one and it's pretty good enough for me. I don't have that many photos to edit every month. And that is all there is to it. So thank you for watching and um, please make any comments or any questions that you may have um, and I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can.